I'm going to run you through everything that I carried with me on my Great Divide mountain biking trip. It's 2,700 miles from Banff in Canada to the Mexican border. I've already done the bike that I took, the bags, and this is the last installment of that segment, the gear that I put inside those bags. I'm going to run you through how I pack it and a couple of little caveats that I think are more important for longer trips and some aspects that I've learned about bike touring over the last 10,000 miles of touring and a couple thousand miles of through hiking. A lot of the stuff that I use serves a multitude of functions specifically because I'm not really a one trick pony. I like to through hike and backpack, car camp, bike touring, world travel. I do a little bit of everything so I don't really try to buy too many specific items that work in just one realm. Um, a lot of cycling kit or garb doesn't really suit my personality specifically for that reason. I also think that the quality is important and lightweight, compact is also important but you have to pay a price for that. So bearing that in mind, not everyone's gonna be able to afford everything that I mentioned in this video, but there are some great suggestions here for some stuff that you can ha put as a goal moving forward. The entire capacity of my bike was 42 liters and I was able to fit all this stuff plus three days worth of food and six liters of water at one time. So as a caveat, I'd like to point out that Everything I endorse in this video today are things that I've used and tested personally out there on the trail and I stand behind fully. That being said, I am an ambassador for Hyperlite Mountain Gear. They did send me some of this gear in exchange for my services, although I did pay for it, I get a heavily discounted rate. And also my Black Diamond Sun hoodie was given to me by them because I do affiliate marketing with them. So that's full transparency. I'm going to give you some opinions on both of those items and I still stand by them regardless. I think they're great pieces of equipment. I have been given things in the past that I really don't use, therefore I do not endorse it. Now that that red tape's out of the way, let's get into what I brought in no particular order. First and foremost, I'm going to hop into what I wore on a daily basis while riding my bike. A brain bucket, a little bell helmet. Gotta keep that noggin safe. On top of that, I would wear these Gooder sunglasses the uh, Amelia Earnhardt ghosted me. Love these shades. Cheap, easy to use. What else could you want? I wore a sun hoodie every single day. This is the Alpine Glow hoodie by Black Diamond. This thing is amazing. I've been wearing sun hoodies daily for years and I have literally never had anything perform as well as this sun hoodie. This is what Black Diamond sent me and it completely replace my Patagonia that I've been using for years, as well as the Outdoor Research Echo that I had recommended many times previous to this. This hoodie was absolutely unbelievable. Below that, I would wear just a pair of regular hiking shorts, nothing crazy, five inch length from Kathmandu in New Zealand. It's very controversial. I didn't wear underwear, nor did I wear a padded shorts anything. I just let the brook saddle take care of all the funny business below the belt. Under that, I would wear a pair of darn tough socks, merino wool, ankle height, nothing fancy. This is why I hike in, this is why I wear every day. These are great socks. And no matter what I do, it seems like these will not get smelly. It's miraculous, honestly. I don't know how they do it. Darn tough makes a great sock. And on my feet, I didn't use clipless. I just used 510 by Adidas mountain biking flats. Those things were so gnarly and so smelly by the end of the trail, I had to throw them away. They never made it home. They didn't even get on the plane. So those are no longer with us, unfortunately. Moving into the egress pocket, this little bad boy right here by Revelate Designs. In no particular order, I'm just gonna pull some stuff out of here. I got an EpiPen. I actually have two of them and a little bit of Benadryl because apparently, if I eat nuts, I'll die. Super lame. That would stay up there in this pocket. I generally would keep things I wanted to access all the time, like my AirPods or this power bank, which I could recharge with my Dynamo Hub. This stuff was really important to have handy all day. Would keep these Aqua tablets in case I lost, broke, froze, or anything with my water filter and was no longer able to treat water. This was just a backup in order to keep my guts safe from Giardia. I carried a multitude of charging cables. This is just an iPhone cable that I would carry with a two port charging block. 
This right here had a USB and a USB-C and it was a fast charger. This is extremely important if you're gonna go do a bike packing mission and time is of the essence and you're at a McDonald's and you've got 30 minutes to eat a cheeseburger and charge your devices, a high-speed charger is key. Rear tail light for traffic moments when I made it onto the road, keep it easily accessible, but not on my back bag all the time because I didn't want to lose it nor cover it in mud. An emergency blanket in case I got into some real trouble out there on the trail, have that around to save my ass. Single layer buff. This is great for the cold mornings to have handy whenever I needed it. I also carried a fleece beanie from Outdoor Research and some belay gloves that I've been using as a climber but worked really well in this situation because I didn't have any other gloves. I also carried this little running slash cycling cap by Patagonia. It's the duckbill cap. I love this thing. And two glove liners that I could use just to block the wind on those early mornings. And that's it. Generally, things that went into that were also snacks, food for the day, and anything I just needed to keep nice and handy. Behind that was the salty roll. This is the double-ended stuff sack by Revelate Designs. It's 17 liters, and you can fit a surprising amount of stuff in this bag overall. This is my camp setup and everything I didn't need until the very end of the day, because once it was in that harness under the egress pocket, I really didn't want to access it for any reason. So let's see what we got in here. Right in the end, we have the cooking setup. This includes a small Sea to Summit towel for cleaning my dishes. Inside the pot, I kept a small Pocket Rocket Deluxe Stove. A light pot by Evernew Titanium. Really, really convenient, wide bottom, huge handle. Next up, we have a lot of camp clothes. This is another sun hoodie. This is the sun hoodie by Patagonia. This is what I was initially using. And honestly, it's too thick. It doesn't breathe as well as I liked it to. I had one of their older hoodies and the black diamond blew this one completely away. Top of that, I have the Patagonia Terrabone joggers. These things are excellent at blocking the wind. And I just like to sleep in them and have them for camp. These are my camp pants. And just one extra layer at night if things get a little bit cold have the inflation sack for my ground pad, which is a Thermarest Uber Light ground pad. Not the warmest, but very small. Also got a pair of Outdoor Research undies. This is a Z-Pack duplex tent. It's a two-person tent that I use a lot with my partner and on my through hike. This is probably a bit overkill on tent for a bike packing mission. It's extremely light and I love this thing, honestly. I use it as a hiker and you set up for trekking poles, but in this scenario, I would use these carbon fiber poles that I got from Z-Pack. They make it specifically for that tent. It's packed down nice and light since I'm not going to carry around trekking poles when I'm not hiking. Got a warmer, thicker pair of smart wool socks that are great for when I'm sleeping at night and get a little bit cold. All the way. And all the way at the bottom, I have a Patagonia 30 degree sleeping bag. This is their Fitzroy bag. 30 degrees is very comfortable for me in most scenarios. Summertime, I had one or two nights where I was a bit on the colder side, but generally I just throw on all my layers and sleep like that, and they'll keep me a bit warmer. You might also notice that I do not have a sleeping bag liner. I don't believe in them, honestly. I just sleep in clothes, and then I wash my clothes. Simple as that. So I sleep in those joggers, I sleep in a long sleeve t-shirt and socks, and every time I do laundry, I just clean those clothes, and that's that. No sleeping bag liner for this guy. I think it's a ripoff, personally. Moving back to my cockpit, it's where I kept my feed bags, and in those, I would generally keep the little knickknacks, and here's some of the more important things in there besides mustard packets and mayo packets that I stole from restaurants. Uh, I would have a bike lock. I'd coil this thing up underneath one of the bottles, in the feed bag, just to lock my bike up for a little bit of added security. Not a lot when I'm at a grocery store because I did the trail alone. And a lot of times I'd need to run inside and I didn't have any problems, but I wanted to make sure no one walk off with my bike. I also kept a couple water bottles up there. 
typical cycling bottles like that. My full capacity of water was six liters for the trail. And generally speaking, I rode around with three to four. Nothing major, not a ton. I would carry a little Swiss army knife, something like this for cutting up cheese. It has a knife, it has scissors, a nail file, tweezers. I didn't get one of the big ones. Honestly, that's plenty for me. Carry my spork there so I could eat on the go. And I never wanted my spork to be shoved somewhere out of reach. I would carry my tent stakes in my feed bag specifically because they're dirty. I don't want to stick them in my bags and I don't want them to poke holes in my bags. So where I could keep an eye on them, they'd be out and about. There's a great spot on my feed bag to store those. A Little bit of sunscreen, a lighter, my trowel, once again, keep that on the outside because it's pokey. I don't want it to stab through my waterproof stuff sacks and it's a little bit dirty. Although there's not fecal matter on there because I'm quite tidy. There is dirt. And I would carry a couple little bungee cords or ski straps, something to secure subway sandwiches to my bike in the time of need. Moving backward onto my top two bags. I had a couple of bags just like this. that I would house things that I didn't want touching some of my other things, particularly my bike tools, greasy rags, and so on. I would carry a headlamp in there just because it was easy to access and I didn't use it all that often realistically. Carry a master link for my chain in case I had a major chain problem. I carry a little bit of chain oil. It's essential on the Great Divide in order to lube your chain daily. Your chain is going to get filthy out there on the ride. I carried a multi-tool with a spoke tool on it and also a chain breaker. This one is by Junior, really great tool. I'm a little bit of a larger side for some of the weekend trips, but it was great for me. This is a soap tablet by Sea to Summit. These things are incredible. I love them, they do an incredible job. This is a ton of soap right here. This is body wash, dishwashing liquid, whatever it might be. I had my rain cover for my Brooks saddle, a small towel for cleaning my chain. I also would carry a patch kit, which later then turned into an extra bottle of sealant, and I carried both at the same time for my tubes and for my tubeless setup. I would carry a water filter and a one liter bladder. This is the Catadine Be Free, and then I have a Knock Outdoors two liter bag that folds up really small for that auxiliary water storage in times of need, or also known as the Great Divide Basin. Next, we are on the frame bag. Frame bag is where I stored almost all of my food day to day. So when I don't have any food, it's primarily empty other than the AeroPress Go, which I use as my primary source of making coffee on the trail. Although this is quite large and heavy, it ultimately saved me a lot of money at coffee shops because I'm an addict for coffee and made a lot of my mornings a lot more enjoyable when I was freezing my ass off in Canada. These are a couple of nipples that go with these spokes, and I've carried a couple of extra spokes with me. I had a spare tube in case of emergency, and there was a few, and a little bit of a pump that I could get some air into my tire. The next bag to get into is my saddle bag, which is the Terrapin by Revelate Designs. I really enjoyed this particular style. It fits into the harness nicely, and it has a little valve on it, so you can purge it of air and get it really compressed with all of your things in it. I'd use this bag generally to carry all of my extra layers for the day. This was the easiest bag to get to throughout my day. And a lot of my additional or auxiliary food or water would end up going into this as well because I generally had quite a bit of extra space in this bag, especially in those colder days as the weeks went on. I've got the Melanzana Fleece, the legendary Leadville, Colorado Melanzana. I've had that thing since about 2016 or 17. It's been excellent mid-layer. I have my base layer, which is a 32 degree heat Amazon brand. Very thin, very light, but very effective mid-layer that's quite affordable. Highly recommend that. Got these dual fold leggings. Not my first choice. These are a cotton blend. They're very inexpensive and they're what I had, but they're heavy and they don't do a great job of insulating when wet. I wish I'd replace those somewhere along the way. A little bit of toilet paper. 
I have a Kindle for entertainment in the tent. Got to carry a rain jacket. This is a Gore-Tex three-layer Montane rain jacket. When you're cycling, wind is a major factor. So having a thick windbreaker to stop that cutting wind when it's raining out, and it will be raining on the Grand Divide at some stage. It's nice to have a thicker, a little bit warmer rain jacket. I carried a DCF food bag and a 50-foot piece of paracord. I would combine these together to do bear hangs and keep my food away from critters. This is the Arcteryx Atom Synthetic Hoodie. This is my puffy jacket. One more layer to go on top of my mid-layer on some of those colder mornings or nights. This is a first aid kit. This is gauze and neosporin, a little bit of medical tape, some tenacious tape, as well as my toothbrush, my toothpaste. So it's essentially a toiletry bag and a small stuff sack. Keep it all organized. And lastly, I have my camera that I carried with me for the entire trip. This is a small caveat for me because most people won't be carrying a full frame camera with a microphone on it. But since I'm working on this documentary about my trip, which you should check out, and I should be releasing right about next week or the week after, um, I carried this full frame digital camera. I'm using it to film right now. It's the Sony a7C full frame camera with a Sony 16 by 35 PZ lens. I had the Rode VideoMic Go 2. I have a Polar Pro ND filter. I also carried with me a Gorillapod that I could use to set the camera up and film. Little lens cloth. An SD card reader for an iPhone. SD card case for all of my cards as I was out and about. I ended up buying a small hard drive as well to store some extra stuff. I carried an extra battery and I put a lot of that stuff into the camera pod from Hyperlite Mountain Gear that I strapped on the back of my bike. But more times than not, I was wearing the camera on my back like an idiot. That's very uncomfortable. I don't recommend doing that for months at a time. So that's just about everything that I carried. I'm going to go through a couple specific notes that I thought are important to mention. One thing that you're going to want to be able to carry at least six liters of water, if not as many as 10 liters of water on your Great Divide mountain biking trip, depending on what time of year you go and your comfortability making miles in the heat of the summer. I think that's important. You're also going to want to have space for three days worth of food on your bike somewhere along the way in your packing arrangement somehow. You're going to be able to need to make that work for you in between some of those food carries. Going harder on your Repair kit is also important because things are going to break on your bike no matter what. And at one point I had a major mechanical and I was 200 miles away from the nearest bike shop and I just needed to make it work that day. So I'm going to do a really deep dive on some mechanical issues you might face on your trip along with some important tools that you need to bring along on an expedition style bike trip. But I'm also going to notate some things for a week or a weekend or trip as well. Look out for that video coming up in the future. and. Since a lot of this route exists in bear country, you are going to need to bring some provisions to protect you from bears, especially in the northern sections of this trail. For those of you who are northbounders, you're going to be fine getting bear spray as you make your way through the southern parts of the trail. There's bear spray everywhere. I left my bear spray in the southern part of the trail as well. You can find it at the Hachita Community Center. Go and look for it. It has a great harness with it as well. Um, and then those northbounders should be able to find some bear spray somewhere in Banff. You can either buy it or get it for free, but you do not want to leave Banff without any bear spray if you're heading south. Also, some paracord to hang your food and some other options, maybe an ursac. Whatever you find is right for you. You need to be able to protect yourself from those grizzly bears, which I saw multiple of in the northern portions of the trail. So there you have it. That's a lot of the things I brought with me. Keep an eye out for some of those videos I'm going to put out 